waiting for the shit. Hi, this is Pat with Pat's Two Cents with God's Church of Love. Some of you are mourning. Some of you are hurting. Some are frustrated. Some are in a quandary. And some of you are wondering what the heck is God doing with your life? The Bible says hope deferred makes the heart sick. And there are times when we get discouraged as we're waiting for the shift. We get discouraged as we're waiting for that change to take place, as we're waiting for that supernatural, beautiful, divine word of God, that destruct, I mean, that instruction straight from God the Father, or the healing we're waiting for seems to be in slow motion as it approaches. But let me tell you, no matter what it looks like, no matter what it feels like, God is moving, even if it looks like you're standing still. Now, imagine an optical illusion. You're on the freeway. Imagine how this looks. You're going at 25 to 30 miles an hour, and somebody flies by you at 140 miles an hour. Do you know what it's going to look like you're doing? It's going to look like you're standing still. And there are times when life happens and God is moving. And he, we think he's moving slowly. We think he's standing still because we're racing by so fast. We're not realizing that even in the slow motion that it seems like, <laughs> like God's moving at a snail's pace. He's getting a lot more done at that pace than we are at 140 miles an hour, racing to solve the problems, racing to put the fires out, racing to handle the, the, the issues of life with our little pea brains and our little, what you would call, solutions to the problems. All right. So there are times because it looks like God is standing still, we get frustrated with him. Some of us get frustrated with him because we wonder how long is this going to hurt? Some of us get frustrated with him because we wonder why did our loved one have to suffer so long? Why did they have to die so slowly? Why did they have to die, period? Because we had other answers, but we don't realize God is a God of purpose. And his hand is on you, not just on the person dying. And there may be some things you cannot do for him until some people in your life, good or bad, are removed in order to free you up to do God's will and live out his purpose and calling. Now, some of you are frustrated because you're wondering, when is my ministry going to get anywhere? When is God, when is it going to come? Uh, let me say it like this. <clears throat> when is the curtain going to close on the scenario of me marking time in a holding pattern? Some of you feel like you're in a holding pattern. And you think God has altogether forgotten all about you. He's not even mindful of you. He's not thinking about you. He's got bigger fish to fry. And you're a little, uh, a little goldfish, maybe. Or a little sardine. You're not big enough for him to consider. Well, let me tell you, sweetheart, we're moving into an area now and a time where God is going to start pulling those of you from out of obscurity. And you're going to be flying past the ones you thought were flying past you. And you're going to wonder, oh my God, it's going to happen so fast when God starts busting loose on your ministry. And for those of you who are mourning right now, know that God will heal your heart. He will give you beauty for ashes, Isaiah 61. The oil of joy for the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. He will lift your spirits and heal you. As one of the callings that's on Jesus is to heal the broken in heart. There's a lot of stuff going on in this season. Some of you are battling physical ailments. 
Some of you are battling circumstantial setbacks, obstacles, and calamities. Some of you are, are, are battling for your faith while you're watching your loved one die. And you're wondering why must they die in the first place? God heals. Why doesn't he heal this one? Why does he just let this one die? Hmm. These are the, the questions that haunt us night and day. There's a song that says God is able. And it has a verse in there that says, questions haunt us night and day. How could God allow my heart to be torn this way? Does he listen when I call? Does he even care at all? Yet, I know when my eyes fail to see, he is able. And even though it seems impossible to me, he is able. And if he chooses not to move in the way we pray he would, I'm confident he's working all together for my good. And I will stand upon his word, for he is able. Amen. So remember, God is able. He has no worthy opponent. We think of the devil as his opposite. He's not. The devil is more of a flunky than an opposite. Trust me. God is up there all by himself, baby. He has no worthy opponent. There's nothing that matches anything close to him. You forget, even the devil was created by God. Whether he started out as an angel, however you want to see it, the bottom line is he still was created by God, which means the creator is always higher with more authority and power than the created. So don't sit there and think, oh, the devil's got some tricks up his sleeves that God can't handle. No, there are some things God refuses to handle because he's looking at the master plan. We see a little portion of the picture. He sees the big picture. He sees his plan for the world. And he knows every little step he's going to use. Mm -hmm. So when you feel like God has become impotent, when you feel like there is no power in God or God is not even thinking about you, you forget the scripture where Jesus promises, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. And for some of you who don't know what forsake means, and I'm not trying to be patronizing or belittling, but some may not know what it means. It means he will never forget about you. He will never abandon you. It's all that wrapped up in that word forsake. Okay? So be encouraged that Emmanuel means God with us. And that's one of the names they call Jesus. God with us us. And if God be for you, who can be against you? God is with you. God is working on your behalf through the good, the ugly, the bad, the wonderful, the miraculous, through every scheme of situation from, from one part of the pendulum to the other part of the pendulum. God is working it all. He's working all things together for our good. That's what Romans says. All things work together for our good to them that love God and who are called according to his purpose. So don't lose heart. Don't let your heart get sick. Like the Bible says, hope deferred or hope held on delay and delay and delay and in a holding pattern, not coming to fruition, not being realized. Hope deferred makes the heart sick. Don't go there. Ask God every step of the way. You start to feel down in your spirit, ask God to lift your spirits. You start to feel frustrated, ask God to remove the frustration. You're going through mourning, which is natural, ask God to ease the pain. Ask God to remove it as quickly as possible. Seriously. Because, see, if you wallow in any of that too long, you will allow it to paralyze you. And you don't want it to do that because you're here for a purpose. You're bought with a price. You're not just here for your loved one. You're not just here to be somebody's wife. 
You're not just here to be somebody's husband, somebody's father, somebody's mother, somebody's son, somebody's daughter, somebody's sister or brother. You're not just here to be an employee. You're not just here for that. God put you on this planet to make a difference. But you've got to have an ear to hear and a heart to understand and obey. Matthew chapter 5. This is where Jesus talks about what I just said in much fewer words. Matthew 5, starting at verse 3. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall, not maybe, they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, those of you who are quick to forgive, who release people when they owe you money. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Make sure your heart is as <laughs> pure as possible, y'all. Check your motives every time. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Now, here are some of you that are trying to do all that. Mm -hmm. And some. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness sake. That's some of you. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. See, some of you get talked down. Uh, belittled, rejected, dismissed, <laughs> ignored. Some of you are treated like your words or the chatter of an idle child's thoughts, fantasies. And you get treated as if what you're doing and what you're saying matters nothing. I mean, it just has no weight whatsoever. It's like, go play with your ball. Go play with your dolly. Because that's about how much worth what you have to say has for me. Well, guess what? God's listening. He's looking and booking. He's taking notes. And he's got your name. And when people ignore you, when people bawl you out, cuss you out while you're trying to help them out, when people are putting you down and, and giving you false accusations, when you're trying to do good, guess what? God blesses you that much more, baby. He blesses you because you keep being determined to do good by the people who do you wrong for doing them good. God knows. Don't think that because he's not moving where you can see his hand. It doesn't mean that you're not getting rewards for what you've been dealing with. It doesn't mean that he will forget all about your labor of love. Baby, the word says, God has not forgotten your labor of love. Know that whatever you have invested in any human being, God blesses it. If he doesn't bless the human being because the attitude is raunchy, he will bless you. You got to come in here and on the other side. Trust me about that. Be encouraged that God is very much aware of everything you do in love. Every single thing. Because when you operate from his heart, when you operate from the point of compassion, which can only come out of love, and God is love, that moves God's heart. You grab his attention. You're not a wallflower that, oh, yeah, I forgot about so-and-so. Let me see, what did they do? No, that's not what God does. God is right there with you, working through you, empowering you at every step. He's even empowering you to receive the verbal abuse without being torn up by it. Yes, he is. He's shielding you. So know that whatever you're doing for God, Whatever you're suffering through, for God's sake, oh, God is blessing you, babe. It will not go unnoticed by God, not one iota. Trust me on that. God is very, very mindful of each and every one of you. You hear me? Now, there are times when 
you, you know, you might find yourself in a situation where a person is trying to start an argument with you. And they may be confronting you in public, talking about you like you got 10 tails and two heads. And the folks standing around them listening might be laughing at you. And everything in you wants to put them down and tell them all because you know how to do it. You haven't been saved that long. You know how to let the flesh rise its ugly head. But you keep that flap shut. You're praying under your spirit. Help me, Lord. <clears throat> Help me to walk away from this and not try to prove myself. And guess what? God will. And you may walk away feeling like you look like a fool. You may walk away feeling like you've been used, abused. <clears throat> you may walk away feeling like they tore you to shreds while everybody danced on every crumb of what was left of you. But trust me, babe, trust me when I say God's got you. They can laugh all they want and they can dance on every crumb all they choose. But guess what? God's got you. You're every whit whole. Every whit whole. God's got you in the palm of his hand. He will not allow destruction to come to you. He will cover you with his feathers and under his wings shalt thou trust. In the name of Jesus, know that God's got you. I've got to read it. I've got to go there, y'all. Psalms 91. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge, my fortress, my God, in Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare or the trap of the fowler and from the noise and pestilence he shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shalt thou trust his truth shall be thy shield and buckler thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night nor for the arrow that flieth by day nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday a thousand shall fall at thy side and ten thousand at thy right hand but it shall not come nigh thee. You hear me? And then verse 9, it's like David saying, because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even unto the most high thy habitation, or even the most high thy habitation, verse 10, there shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. He shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways, not some. In all thy ways, they shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against the stone. In other words, the angels will keep you from tripping over this crap. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and the adder. Here's your authority that he's given you. The young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample under feet. Because he has set his love upon me. This is God talking now. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him or demonstrate to him my salvation. All right, so know that God is there in it with you. He's in the trenches with you. Woo! When you're bleeding, when you feel torn apart, when you feel aimless and you feel lost, baby, God's got you. You are not lost. You are not lost. He will not let you fall. He will not let you fall. He is never weary, and he will not let you fall. He will not let you fall. He will not let you fall. He is never weary, and he will not let you fall. God bless you. Be encouraged. Know that God will heal your broken heart. Know that this too shall pass. In the name of Jesus, no weapon formed against you will prosper. He is with you. 
Remember that you're not alone. Whew. God bless you.